Okay, welcome back. You just joining us. You're watching news up here in the city of Lagos. It's now time for our conversation to begin. Um, like we've, I, or like we earlier intimated, our focus of right now will be on the five-year agenda has set by the central bank governor, Godin Demirfiele. Now we were all, we are all saw the event um, that took place on Monday, where the governor had come to reel out a few of um, the. Uh, approaches that he, he hopes to put forward in achieving quite a few um, developmental strides in the economy, especially with the banking sector. Uh, top on the list is the fact that um, there are indications that um, he might be calling for the recapitalization of the nation's bank. Um, part of the things he talked about is the fact that um, he looks, he's looking at, um, within the next five years, Nigerian banks topping, um, the, I mean, being among the best 500 banks um, in, in the world. And that, you know, would come with some um, higher capital um, um, base. Part of the issues he also raised is the need to ensure a microeconomic stability. He talked about um, um, uh, achieving this double digit growth um, trajectory. He talked about a single in, um, digit inflation rate, uh, accelerating employment and all of them. These are all the issues that um, the CBN governor um, talked about. So this morning we shall be looking at this, east, this situation a lot more holistically and um, Let's see how achievable uh, this um, could be. We have in our legal studio, we have um, Boniface Chizia, who is an economist and um, uh, a regular face on our TV station. Boniface, welcome to um, News Up. Thank you very much for having me. Thank Good you. morning. Thank You're you. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so um, we have seen, uh, we, we, have all, we were all uh, uh, party to what transpired on Monday, the CBN governor, like, is the routine. Uh, at the beginning of Eterno, you, you, you lay out your plan of action uh, to guide you through your five years. Now, I haven't read through that document. Uh, of Which of those um, uh, agenda hits you um, a lot more, or would you say is um, of, of, um, of more of a priority on, on the list of the agenda to you? Well, I think that uh, we should uh uh, put things in context, put things in perspective. You say it's routine. It's not routine. You know, it's, it's, uh, it speaks to a given level of discipline, you know, for someone to come and is going to embark on a journey and he begins to tell you the things he aims to achieve. It's not, it's not common. I mean, we've been here for quite some time. And I've seen governors come before MFLA. And uh, I don't know how many of them have brought that. You know, I know that Soludo came with his 13 point agenda, you know, for structuring the banking, uh, the banking system. But so I think for this governor, I have to give him kudos, you know, I have to say that uh, he shows a level of discipline. So you want to, when he started in 2014, uh, it was a, he gave, gave a press conference in which he tried to outline, you know, what should, uh, you know, what should be uh, his, his focus. Yeah. And again, he has, he has done that. So I think that we should put that in the context, put that in perspective, and uh, we salute that sort of discipline. Now, I think that uh, you did capture in your intro. Um, but essentially, yeah, most of the things he has said, you know, most of them are like the things you would expect to right, are wrong with the economy. He talks about inflation, interest rates, exchange rates, and so on and so forth, uh, developmental functions of the central bank, and so on. And I think that uh, he gave assurances, for instance, you know, for, for, for managing the foreign exchange. He did say that uh, the, the, the money flows is going to continue. You know, I mean, we have, we have, we have people, we have uh, um, economists in this environment that are pushing for. I've uh, put in the Naira, yeah. you know, and of course, some of us have a position for which, uh, in which we are not, we are not, we are not ready to shift ground, okay. uh, yeah, because we don't believe that um, we will have a market for foreign exchange in this uh, country. But the, the main thing is he raised, uh, which you refer to, is having to recapitalize uh, the banks. I think that's an area we now want to look at. Now he gave reasons, you know, he, he did indicate that uh, the first time was you had recapitalization when. Capital base was uh, raised from uh, two billion, surprisingly, to 25. He looked at the exchange rate and tried to say, uh, say what the equivalent was okay. then. Yeah. Yes, and then, and today, you know, it says what what is happening. And with the exchange rate, then it was about 100 naira to a dollar. Mm -hmm. Now we're we're talking about 360, and then it shows that there's been some um, uh, some diminution and uh, you know capital base, and so there's a need for us to for that as to revisit. So I have issues on that. I think we'll, we'll discuss it. And I think that. Uh, uh, what should drive the capital, capital base of, of uh, an organization? Or do you, he, he did talk about long-term capital, but uh, what should drive the capital base? Because your capital as an organization, as an institution, as a bank, 
is to enable you, you know, put your physical structures in place, you know, put the mortar and, 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 and things in place, and then as a cushion, so in case, you know, you run into some water and you cause some losses, and so it, it wants a, a fallback. And so we have to put that in context and say, look, that amount of money, we don't know what it's going to be. And he says, you know, he's going to discuss with uh, the the bankers, bankers Committee, which is a good way to go, and I expect that doing that, he would... He would, uh, he would get their views and they take them along. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, uh, when the policy is unfolded, is implemented, we uh, wouldn't have too much of, a, of an outcry. So I think that's, uh, uh, that's where we stand. That we cannot go on with the conversation as, uh, All right. as you raise issues. You know, the, the, an average Nigerian might not be able to make complete sense of what the CBN governor uh, ruled out on Monday. Uh, but one of the things, uh, one of the five points uh, agenda includes. Um, fostering the development of a robust financial payment system infrastructure that will increase access to finance to all Nigerians, uh, thereby raising the financial inclusion in the country. I want to stick with the financial inclusion in the country. Now, uh, a very good number of Nigerians are unbanked, and the few Nigerians that are banked have issues with uh, the DMBs, with the banking system. For example, uh, I, I read yesterday that um, someone, someone was trying to make a point from uh, the CBN governor's um, you know, agenda and said that um, he has a challenge. He, I think he tried to deposit an amount of money to someone else. Uh, the bank deducted it, but it didn't reflect on the, uh, on the uh, receiver's account. And that is a similar case that has happened to me as well. For those of us that are banked, we are still having challenges with with uh, the banks, the DMBs. So how do you think the CBN would achieve or will try to include more people in this banked bracket? Well, Zika, uh, I think the thing to say is that you will never have a bank system without any challenges. You have challenges. Uh, challenges are there, and it seems that with those challenges be obstacles, or, you know, and they challenge you, like you say, and then you, you, know, you remove them and then you move on. Uh, there, will be, there will be issues, but it seems that you have to put things in place so that as they come, come on, you know, they are being resolved as quickly. I think that's, very, that's what is important. Uh, if you go to the central bank, they have a consumer department. You know, but I don't know to what extent that department is effective. Yeah. Uh, whereby, if you're a bank customer and you, you have some issues with your bank and you're not, you have some dissatisfaction, you, you should you know, you should go to this department. And they're, they're, they're obliged, you know, to take up your case and make sure that uh, it's resolved amicably. So I think that's important. But financial inclusion is very important, like you just, uh, you, 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 you just uh, uh, alluded to. Um, if you don't have people, um, people um, more of your population embracing the banking system, it, it's going to, to that extent, affect your, your, your level of you know, development. So it's very important to put that in context. And the Central Bank has, has been on this. You know, there are lots of uh, measures that they've put in place to try and see to what extent they can bring more people into, uh, into the formal banking system. Uh, now, we know it's, it's a big challenge. You know, so they have certain schemes. You, know, you have agency banking, you have mobile banking, and so on, which introduced over the period to, make, to, to remove the, 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 the fact that you, you must go to a bank branch you know, before you could do this with us. And also, you have leverage on automation. And so, so you have your handset, you know, so your handset is a, a mobile bank. So uh, banking has moved on. So uh, I think that we are making some progress. And this has been emphasized, financial inclusion has been emphasized. But, but whether you have difficulties with going to your bank, you have difficulties, you have challenges, you're dealing with human beings. Even where you now you automate, let's say human beings that are going to, you know, operate, you know, the whatever machine, uh, you know, processes you put in place. And so the extent you have human beings, you know, you have have challenges that have issues, or you have to just make sure that the uh, resolution process is, is put in place and that uh, you don't have issues first, you don't have issues that begin to affect customers and begin to drive them away uh, from the place in the banks. I think those are the challenges. There are also issues, you know, there are some charges, bank tariffs, and so on and so forth, which I, I did uh, on my own agenda too to him, <laughs> which I pointed out. I had to say that, uh, you know, there are complaints. So it, it takes tariff, you know, people say, what's I mean, account management, for instance, what does it mean? Account maintenance fee, mm -hmm. and so on. Yes. yes uh, a few of these charges are you, for instance, you know, we, at some point in time, um, uh, the, uh, some bank came up with uh, this uh, charge of 65 naira if you use top party, uh, yeah, you know, sure, uh, sure. in the to withdraw ATM, in to withdraw money. And so I, I, I did say that we should try in the process and try and revisit. And right. Look at the tariff and see, for instance, you know, if. And there are areas we, we have to embrace best practice. 
you know, what goes on elsewhere. And so we take what goes on elsewhere and see to what extent we can, uh, we can make sure that uh, we are operating the way people operate elsewhere. Now, still staying with the issue of uh, recapitalization um, of the banks, uh, uh, some quarters have argued that um, for the CBN to have come out to say there is a need to recap the banks, uh, it's indicative that um, some banks might be in financial danger. No, I think that's what Seven is trying to do. It's, no, no, no okay. not, not CBN. That's what people, <laughs> okay, are, people, people are saying. Okay, yes, that yeah, yes, they, they, are, there is a possibility that some banks might be in some financial danger. Well, I think that to a large extent, I think the banking sector in Nigeria has, has proven to be robust. I've uh, had the issues, you know, lately in the sense that uh, banks have, you know, had some issues and then they've been well managed. Mm. The, the latest one we know, the Diamond Bank Access, you know, so there are issues that it was well managed. What's important to the bank uh, customer is that you, you don't lose your money and banking goes on. I mean, I have an account with Diamond Bank and for me, it's as if nothing has happened. And so that's what, that's what is important. It's not that you don't have issues. You have issues, but make sure that your resolution mechanism is up to scratch and that's what is important. So talking about um, one of the things he mentioned about helping farmers, entrepreneurs uh, by, uh, by improving credits to uh, banks or SMEs, how, how do you think this is going to work out? If now there are still complaints by MSMEs, uh, by uh, farmers about taking loans from the banks or how expensive the interest rate is, how do you think LZBN is going to uh, work on this one in, in five years? Well, I think that uh, you know, I don't kind of understand how expensive interest rates are because those uh, special target funds they are single digits, and so if others are paying, you know, paying to seventy percent, you know, to attack funds, and you're getting funds at nine percent, and you're still complaining about it. I think that the issue is that uh, I'm, I, we have to work on the mentality of the, the, the average Nigerian entrepreneur. You know, that the money that banks are going to lend to you does not bank doesn't own that money. The bank, the mad money belongs to customers. And so the bank has an obligation to ensure that this money is being, that they do due process, they're going to give this money to you. Uh, to ensure that you are, you are fit and proper person, you have the capacity and the capability, you know, to be able to utilize this money well. And so when you come, you don't come with a viable proposal, you just think that because Siemens announced that we, uh, this money has been put there, for uh, you know, for us, uh, targeted for as well as medium scale enterprises, and then you have come with this entitlement mentality, uh, so you come there and then expect that you're just going to get it. It's not so. So you better get down, do your work, do your homework, do your package, your proposal. And then the banks are there to learn. You know, that's their business, financial intermediation. And so, but if you don't, if you don't come for a viable proposal, they won't give you this money. And so, so I think that's uh, the, is the call for the orientation. I think that uh, customers have to orientate themselves and know that, uh, you know, we're not going, just going to pick that this money. Uh, it's, not, it's not a national cake. Uh, you're going to have your own share. No. Uh, the whole essence is that this money has been put there to... To, uh, to jumpstart development, to create employment, and so on and so forth. And so it will give it to you, and then you use it very well. So that, that purpose, you know, is lost. Of great concern to a lot of Nigerians will be the, the alignment between the fiscal and um, monetary policy, because if the central bank goes ahead with all of these um, agenda and the fiscal, on, on, on the fiscal side, it does not align. It comes to a nullity. Uh, uh, how well aligned? What's the alignment? What kind of alignment do you expect between the monetary and the fiscal side? Well, I think you said it well, and this is why I've listened to comments. And the government, the governor talks about growth, isn't it? Double digit growth. Yeah. And then it talks about inflation and so on and so forth and so on. And that's, uh, it's well upset, you know. So, yes, okay, fine. It's good, you know, put those things on the, on the table. Well, you know, but well, that's one of those things are beyond monetary policy. You know, so if, for instance, they're fighting inflation, and then the, uh, the, the executive, you know, fiscal authorities, you know, decide to run massive, massive deficits, mm. and they decide to fund these deficits, mm. you know, say, look, hey, hey, wait a minute, your governor will put you to your print money and run it. You don't have inflation, so there's no way you're going to be able to manage it. And so, like you did observe, you know, for, you, for the governor to succeed, that has to be complementarity with the physical and monetary policy. They, they have to work together. They have to dovetail and work in some direction. This is very important. But it shouldn't be so difficult. I think that uh, this governor has a rapport with the president. You know, so it's a question of going to the president and getting him sitting down and uh, taking him through and explaining things to him. And then, uh, you know, and, uh, and that's it's a joint interest, you know, making sure that's common interest, joint interest, collective interest in ensuring that the economy grows. I think that's important. So if the, if the, the, the president is coming with some issues and so on from where he stands and he thinks that this is what, uh, for instance, comes and says, devalue the, the Naira, for instance, you can go and explain to him. 
And I'm sure he, he since you are, he, has, he accepts you at certain his uh, wealth expertise, the mad person on ground, he has the technical knowledge, he will certainly will listen to you. And, and the challenge is for you, the person that's sitting on that seat, also to go and make sure that you convince your principal and say, look, right, this is the way to go. Mm. So I don't, I don't have any issues with that. I think that uh, uh, MFLA and, uh, but of course, the issue will come from the environment. You know, so, yes. you know, so you have oil market and so on. So I, today is about something. I don't know. Last time I checked. Now, most of this, you know, the oil market is volatile. So the, the Americans are trying to get at the Iranians and so on. So you have some crisis. And so the oil market is responsive you know, so to that. And I suppose it's resolved tomorrow. Suddenly, who knows what will happen. Mm -hmm. right, so it will happen in such a way that you have uh, issues that come in the funny environment that it's not beyond you. If you go back to the recession we had in 2014, 2015, right, it was the oil market induced to a large extent. Of course, we have to accept the fact that uh, some of it was due to us, the tardiness uh, taking off. So, you know, we're slowing taking off and so on. And then the you uncertainty know, was enhanced. The, the country risk was increased. And now people voted their legs. They moved their monies out uh, of, of this environment and so on and so forth. I think we've learned our lessons. And then we'll hope, hopefully, you know, that we'll, uh, we'll go on from here. Okay, I want to take you on on two things. You talked about inflation. But let me start with the, the global uncertainties that, you know, that we have. That were, some of us are very, very glaring to. Uh, to Nigerians, one of which is a trade fight between China and the U.S., uh, the uncertainty of oil price. But tell me, uh, with this plan the CBN has given, do you think it uh, gives clarity on how it's going to go about these global uncertainties, should they occur? Well, what can you do about global uncertainties? It's difficult, you know? One of the things you can manage, you can manage risk. You know, once uncertainty, it's very difficult to manage uncertainty. Uncertainty means something that you don't, you don't know how it's going to come, you don't know where it's coming. And so, uh, all you can do is to do some crisis management when it happens. Uh, but if it's risk, you know, yes, um, uh, people... But from the plans he wrote out, from the five-year uh, plan, do you think that um, uh, there is a plan to be able to manage the crisis when it eventually happens? Well, you can do contingency. There will be, for instance, if the oil market drops tomorrow, you know, and it happens. And, uh, then you go back and then rework your, uh, look at your, your programs and so on and so forth and rework your program. And one of the problems you have is that you have a budget and what not, a budget which should be on our plan, which is something that should be a blueprint, which we should use. And then we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not keeping fidelity to its implement, implementation. But all you needed to do then, if for instance you find that there are, there are some developments, you know, negative uh, develop, developments that have some that's consequential, and then all, you, all you needed to do was go back and look at your annual plan and then rework it. You know, so okay, we said we're going to do this and do that and that. So uh, because of what has happened so far, what we've seen, what's coming, we're not going to go to date. And then you put that out in the open. You know, uh, and this is why in the past, you know, we had uh, the briefings on the budget implementation. So uh, have your briefing and, and so they tell you these are some of the things we've said we wanted to do. And then, um, because of what's happening in the environment, if there are uh, projections, that, uh, expectations, assumptions that um, have not been realized, right? then we say, look, we're looking at this again, and we're not in, we're, we, want to, we want to forewarn you, we want to apply a red flag to say that uh, you know, this is not, no longer likely for us to, to attain. So that's the only way to go about it. Otherwise, there's not much you can do. You know? So if you're on the alert, you put your thinking cap and you say, look, what are the possible uh, things or well, scenarios. You can do scenario uh, planning. So when this happens, oil oh, drops at this level. What are we going to do, and so on and so forth? But we don't we don't have that uh, comfort in our environment uh, to be able to uh, begin to do that and do it to um, to uh, a considerable extent. We don't, you know. So we have a challenge. You know, we are we are firefighting, we are pursuing things, and uh, we are crisis management, and uh, we, we don't have that comfort. One, one could also think that um, part of the reasons why the banks need to recap is, um, is for global um, financial possibilities. We're looking at um, uh, what we call um, yeah, f global financial um, challenges that could um, come up given to all of these. Um, well, I, th I think for me, you know, for me, <laughs> what the uh, government says that he uh, targets the most Nigerian banks to be amongst uh, top 500, 500 uh, yeah. in the world. Okay. For me, that's just it's good for the image of the country, mm -hmm. you know, to say that. Uh, you know, um, but I think that people who come on, want to do business with you to come to this environment, even if they're coming from outside, uh, they're not overly concerned about your ranking out there. So, yeah, but it's, it's okay, uh, Nigeria. Nigeria is uh, one country in Africa, you know, it has uh, is, uh, one or two of its banks, you know, ranked in the first 500. Fine, it's good. Be good. Bye. But really, 
I, for me, I don't think it's, uh, it's something that we should, you know, so, yeah. I read that and I said to myself, it's good to mm -hmm. do that. But that's, uh, yeah, the most important thing is that he talks about uh, the single obligo, you know, uh, uh, consequences that you, so you have your shareholders funds and then there's a limit yeah. and that says you shouldn't lend more than a third, you know, of your shareholders funds to one particular customer. Um, okay, so that is consequential. But then, you know, we operate in this environment, we don't operate we don't loan in dollars. Okay, so also we have to also put that in, also put that in focus. And also, even if you want to do this, also you can do syndication. So, but okay, we'll take these issues and he wants to do that. And it's good, and like I said earlier on, that it's going to be discussed. It's been discussed with the, those operatives, those who are going to really feel the pinch. You know, I, I know if somebody's trying to float a bank and then they're already crying, say mm. to me, what is this now, this new, you know, Guidelines. you know, lacking the capital and so on and so forth. So, like you sit yourself at like 25 billion, you know, it's a lot of money to, to, for you to now come and, and start a bank. Mm. And so, if, like I said earlier on, so this money, what are you going to use it for? You're going to use it for to put structures, put head office, and so on. You don't use this money to lend the customers. It's not, so, it's not supposed to be that. You're supposed to, you're supposed to do intermediation in the sense that. You're supposed to get money from your deposit depositors and lend to your borrowers. That's yeah. the money you, you trade with. You don't use the capital funds yeah. you know, for, for lending. And so, but the capital funds are there. I share those funds. So when you have you cure loss, uh, make sure that your, your going concern concept is sustained. You know, but so we have to put that and make sure that uh, we don't uh, do things uh, that to uh, ask for monies and uh, we're not sure that there's going to be uh, um, that's the really need. You know, for that sort of money, you know, to be uh, to be put in place. All right, um, Boniface, cheers here. We'll, uh, let's take a break at this moment. Uh, when we come back, we'll still continue our, our discussion on the CBN's governor's vision for the next five years uh, concerning Nigeria's economy. We'll be right back after this break. I'm going to listen it now. You say something, you say no.